newspapers. Lots of newspapers from across the world, from the UK. The Scotsman, Morning Post, Boncho Standard, Large Scale, Lots to Do, Jedburgh Gazette, Folded, so even more fragile. As you can see on either side, it just continues and continues and we're left with brittle edges to the extent where we have stuff that can't be issued anymore, stuff that will be lost. From about the 50s onwards, there was this big initiative to bind newspapers. They started off very large and that's why bindings are both a blessing and a curse because you can see in most cases, if they've not been accessed, the pages are in good condition. But as they're heavily used, and there's more and more strain on this very tightly bound volume, it leads down to this. And so we have a complete failing of the binding. I don't think there's anything, and this might be biased, quite as rich in content uh, in this library as, as a newspaper. We have bound volumes that are damaged. We have readers who have a strong appetite for newspapers, and we need to get them accessible. When you open or close a volume and you do it too fast, what happens is a vacuum is created, and this lifts in the air, and this leads to this extensive creasing and extensive tearing. This is the inner joint that you find in every book and it's exposed, which it shouldn't be. You can see the cords, you can see the rotting leather. So for me, it's clear. There is enough here, although it is a last resort, to choose to disbind this and work on it as single sheets. Something that seems almost bizarre to actually offer to the paper is water. Used in the right way, such as very fine mist, it slowly relaxes the creases. One thing that has to be remembered is that any tear along the edge, especially as it's being handled, will likely continue to tear. Japanese paper has fibres up to seven millimetres. and These long fibres cling onto the paper to create what is a very light but exceptionally strong repair. And then in order to ensure that when we're drying it, it's drying flat and nothing sticks, we use what's called Bondina. Part of the conservation plan that I've created is to future-proof this collection. Because it is so brittle, um, it will eventually perish. And so if we can do as much as we can in our preventive side of conservation, so that's rehousing, environmental conditions, if we can continue to monitor that and improve upon it, then we should have more time. So the focus on the digitization work in relation to conservation work is stabilizing them and then returning them to the shelves for our readers to access.